seems. Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now we're starting to see a new trend with European banks and new statistical data from the investment bank Jefferies LLC. Well, they revealed a startling new trend that could have major implications for Europe's economic future. Now, Italian banks, they have begun dumping an unprecedented volume of Italian sovereign debt. Now, the bank's mass sell-off is most likely driven by these two factors. First, it is an attempt to preempt a pending Basel III reform package that could eliminate the equity capital privilege for the EU government bonds. And the second one is to position themselves for an anticipated autumn announcement from the ECB that they'll begin tightening monetary policy. Now, it looks like Spain, Italy, they're starting to realize that sovereign debt might not be the place to be in a world of rising interest rates. Now, if they're selling sovereign debt, who is buying it? Well, as we can see, there is only one player that can purchase this type of debt. It's the central banks, the ECB, the Fed. And this is what's been happening. They've been purchasing all of this debt. Now, the ECB overbought Italian government debt in July with purchases of about 9.6 billion euros. And what's very interesting about this is that the central bank they surpassed its own capital key rules by which member state debt is bought in proportion to the size of each country's economy. And we see right now the central banks, they are taking up the slack and they're purchasing all this and banks are unloading their sovereign debt because they know what's going to happen. They don't want to be holding on to this when the economies around the world come crashing down. They don't want to be holding on to this when interest rates rise, when the stimulus stops. They know what's going to happen. And this is why we see this happening at this point. Now, 2016 was just revised down to the worst year for U.S. productivity since 1982. And when we look at the economy as a whole, we see it is completely falling apart. And we mentioned that U U.S. companies, they are leveraged uh, more than ever. And when we look at this, when we look at the corporations, over the te last 10 years, S&P 500 corporations, they've returned more money to shareholders via share buybacks and dividends than they've earned. At 8.6 trillion, corporate debt levels are 30% higher today than at their prior peak in September of 2008. At 45.3%, the ratio of corporate debt to GDP is at historical highs, surpassing the levels from the last two previous recessions. So when we look at the corporations right now, U.S. corporations are simultaneously more indebted, less profitable, and more highly valued than they have been in a long time. Plus, they are intentionally making themselves more leveraged by distributing cash as dividends and buying back shares. So we can see right now the corporations, they are worse off than they were during the recessions. And we could see that the stock market, that is just one gigantic illusion because we know who's manipulating this. Well, we know that the Swiss National Bank, they own a record $84 billion in U.S. stocks. Now, if you talked about this in the past, people would say, no, that's ridiculous. They're not the ones purchasing the stocks. They're not supposed to be in the stock market. They're not supposed to be manipulating the market. They're really not supposed to have a trading desk, but what it turns out to be is absolutely true. They own a lot of the stocks. Same thing with the Bank of Japan. Same thing with the Fed. And we need to understand something. The central banks, it's not in their mandate to tell you the truth. Actually, they'll tell you everything else, everything that you don't want to hear, but the truth, that's not one of the things they're going to tell you. Actually, 
they will tell you more lies on top of lies to make it look like it's the truth, but it's really just a lie. And this is what we found out 103 years later. Now, believe me, throughout this time, the central banks, if we go back in time when we start nitpicking at every little thing, we will find out that they've been lying about every single thing. And we know from what we've been looking at, because we can see it, we know they can see bubbles, They know we know that they create the bubbles, we know that they know when it's going to be a recession because they're the ones who cause it, they're the ones who control it. But when you really look at this, you can see that the central banks, they are not telling the truth whatsoever. Now, thanks to the Financial Times, there is proof now that the central banks actually told a lie. And this might be the first recorded instance of a central bank openly lying in an attempt to preserve market stability and getting caught. On Tuesday, the Bank of England admitted that the UK government failed to find enough investors to fully cover its 1914 war loan and was forced to turn to the central bank to help plug a deficit of more than a hundred million. So what we're seeing here is that they lied to the public that the bond was oversubscribed. Now they made claims it was swamped with buyers. The 1914 war loan raised less than a third of its 350 million target attracting a very narrow set of investors and according to the Bank of England employees writing on the bank underground website the bloggers uncovered the cover-up by trawling through the bank's old ledgers and they found out that yes they lied about all of this and it was the central banks that were buying this up so why lie about this for the same reason to this day central bankers around the world lie at every possible opportunity to preserve confidence, to pretend that they are keeping the economy moving along, to make everyone think that everything is great before they bring it down. Now, ironically, the Financial Times, which reported the Bank of England's blog finding, was instrumental in publicizing and disseminating the lie on November 23, 1914, something which may have accused the paper of doing today and they played their role in convincing the public that the sale was a success and it turns out to be a complete lie and if we look at today at all the things that the central bank has been doing where they're covertly sending funds overseas to different banks where they're covertly pushing stimulus where they're buying up bonds having a secret trading desk in the fed controlling the stock market all of this is a lie. Now, many people are out there saying, no, no, this can't be true. But once again, as we can see, the truth always seems to seep out and the truth is always displayed and everyone can actually see it. Now, does the truth come out right away? No, sometimes you got to wait a couple of years. And at that time, nobody really cares anymore because it's maybe a couple generations you know, far removed from when it really actually happened. Almost like, you know, the Kennedy assassination, 9-11. Eventually, those truths will come out. People will discover, and we already have, but a lot of it will be out there so everyone can see it and more people will see it and say, hey, that was a lie. Now here's the truth, but again, you won't have the same reaction because they wait for a long period of time, so it's many generations away from when the, uh, the actual event occurred. Now, we've been looking at many different indicators on how the economy is really doing. And we know that the Fed, well, they're removing their indicator. And I have to say, that was pretty darn exact when we looked at that indicator. But they want to remove it right now so nobody knows what's going on. Well, thanks to Jesse Felder, there is another economic uh, indicator that allows us to look at what's called the real value added. Now, this economic indicator has reliably signaled every recession since 1948. And the data point, real value added, is currently in a negative territory and may therefore be forecasting 
an economic downturn. Now, if it is a false signal, it would be the first one in, in a 70 year history observing this economic indicator. Now, when we look at the gross value added and the real value added, the gross value added is a measure of economic activity like GDP, but it's formulated a little differently. It is the, it is the production side of the economy. It measures the dollar value of all goods and services produced less all the costs required to produce those goods or services. So for example, if you buy $100 worth of wood and $20 worth of other materials and it takes $30 to employ people um, for labor to build the chair, we produced a good for about 150 bucks. Now, if we sell that good for twenty uh, for two hundred dollars, it's fifty dollars, which is the economic value of this product. And when we look at the re the real value added since nineteen forty eight, we can see that each time the real value drops below zero, there is a recession. And if we go back to nineteen forty eight, nineteen fifty four. 1957, 1962, if we look at 1969, all the way up to 1974, 1981, 1990, 2000, 2001, 2008, 2009, guess what happened? The real value added dropped below zero. So we have 277 quarters of data since 1948 and the RVA has only been negative during recessions and currently the three of the last four quarters have produced a negative RVA and it shows us that we are in a recession now the real GDP is producing similar results we have an average of about two percent growth over the same quarters and remember that's even manipulated it's actually a lot worse than that so that is another indicator showing us that we're in a whole lot of trouble. We are in this recession and we see the Fed is removing their indicator, which also shows that we're in a recession. And you have to scratch your head and say, why is the Fed doing this at this point? Now, we see there is a lot of financial pundits out there, or you can call them the financial elite, who own these huge corporations, these financial institutions or they are a former Fed chairman where they're warning about the same exact thing. Now, Alan Greenspan, he warned about the bond market. He said it was a gigantic bubble and it's going to burst. What's very interesting, Jamie Dimon is also warning about the same thing. Now, he is uh, the head, the CEO of uh, JP Morgan. Now, what's very interesting about this is that these two individuals are saying the same exact thing. Sovereign bonds right now are the bedrock of the entire global financial system. They are the risk-free rate against which all risk assets are priced. So if sovereign bonds are in a bubble, every asset under the sun is in a bubble. And we're still, when the bond bubble bursts, we're talking about entire countries going bust and more and more individuals are warning about a bond bubble now on top of all that the bond bubble is bigger than anything the world has ever seen the housing bubble was about 14 trillion in size well this bubble is more than a hundred trillion now, this is going to be a complete and utter disaster, and it's going to take the entire system down. And there are these individuals now that are saying, yeah, we do have a problem. Now, of course, from the corporate media, from other talking heads, they're not going to recognize this whatsoever, because again, they don't want anyone to know. It's not part of their agenda to keep you in the know. They're a private corporation. 
They don't care about a country, a group of people. Their allegiance is not to that. Their allegiance is to themselves. It's to profit. And we can see from all the economic indicators and some very, very reliable economic indicators, we can see we're already in the recession. Actually, we've never left the recession. It's just gotten worse as time has gone on. Now, yes, the Fed has pumped it up with all the stimulus, just like you can do this with someone who is on steroids, where you can pump up the muscles, and over a period of time it looks fantastic, but it does hurt the body. You can also say this about a drug uh, um, addict who's on drugs where yes once they get the drug they feel good everything is great but once you remove the drugs their world comes crashing down around them and we can see this is exactly what is happening right now the entire system has been pumped up on drugs and eventually as you keep pumping the drugs in the patient dies or if you remove the drugs the patient goes through a massive withdrawal process and this is what's going to happen here if they keep pumping the system with drugs guess what the whole system just automatically dies and they're responsible I'm talking about the central banks if they remove the stimulus right now it's going to go through a withdrawal and they can actually have an event to cover this up to blame it on someone else and this is why they're deciding to do this now because they want to control what is happening and they realize that the stimulus it's not doing anything anymore for the economy and they want control of it they're preparing to bring it down and again they're going to blame it on an, another person another entity they don't really care as long as they are not to be blamed for it and this is why we've been saying get ready get prepared because this system is coming down. All these indicators are showing us that we have major problems ahead of us.